Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to Back Office Teardown Lab. I just want to show you this. This is the Tascam 4 channel recorder. You might use something similar, and they use these XLR inputs, which are these balanced inputs. So that means they've got a shield on here and they've actually got a positive and negative for the signal. It's very hard to configure this unit to actually take all of the inputs you want in all the sort of combinations that you might need. So I'm just going to show you how um, you can make this sort of more useful by making up your own cable. And just to show you on the back here an example of why you need to do this. So if this is your recorder, you've got your four channels here. So you've got the option of making four mono inputs. So you've got one, two, three, four. So these are jack sockets and you're plugging them straight into sort of the XLR connections. You've got four there. Or you can have two stereo inputs by using two of those XLR connections each. So with all these sort of, uh, if you can make the cables basically to do all this, then you can you know, mix and match in whatever combination you like. So for example, you could have two mono channels plus one stereo channel. Things like this also have internal microphones uh, and other various um, options and they're kind of mutually exclusive and that's sort of really annoying as well. So at least if you have this, I'll give you an example again, you know, I'm full of examples today. This unit in specifically has some issues. So if you if you want to use one and two, you can use them on a jack, yeah, but there's no three and four jack input. But the problem is channels one and two on this have phantom power at 48 volts if you want, but channels three and four don't support it. So if you use a headphone input, you don't get phantom power for your XLR sockets on your other two. So yeah, ignore my rambling. I'm just going to jump straight in to the how you actually do this. So this is the circuit diagram effectively. It's not too complicated. So if this is your headphone jack or socket, you want your signal plus to go into the sort of live pin here and then to the sort of grounding pin you want your shield and signal minus. So in essence you're going to be joining pins one and three. Now just to show you the actual components you'll need, and I'm going to keep these bags on the screen so you can actually read off these sort of serial numbers. So if this is a CPC, you get an AV14477. These are XLR males, and these XLR males are about I don't know, under a pound each. Very nice standard sort of units and you could just solder straight to those. So I, you need to buy eight of those if you're gonna make an order to do the full set. So we'll just get those all out now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they didn't shortchange me, that's good to know. Well done CPC, you're doing well. Throw away those bags. And then in addition to that, I've bought some other bits and pieces and this is basically a wire that gives you two jack inputs to a single stereo jack output. And I'm going to be using that because I want these two jack connectors. So this is a ProSignal PSG 01010. And then I have bought this other unit, which is a PSG 00183, which is a jack to these phonos. And you'll see what I'm gonna do with these afterwards and I'll just try to tell you why it's because you although you can probably buy these and I'm sure you can buy all these parts often it's cheaper to buy the whole cable for 60p it's already made it's already got the strain relief and then you're just you can just cut these and rewire them into any configuration you like start by unscrewing all of your XLR shells basically you're going to want this separated and apart so you can actually solder everything to it I've off camera I've got all the rest done already so there's two types of cable we're going to make. So there's the type of cable that I'll just show you here, which are going to be the actual separate stereo pairs. And we're going to just use these and cut these off. And in fact, let's just go right ahead to do that. And these are to make the top picture here, one, two, and three, four. So take a, a length that you think is good. And you can see it's actually split to about here. That's probably good enough for us. And it leaves a nice usable length for this piece of wire with this jack on and we might want to, to use that in another project where we can plug this into something else or perhaps we'll use it. We might make our own microphone and want to plug it into one of our XLR connections using this. So we'll put that aside. We'll do that again for the other cable and I'm going to just measure up, make sure that it's the same length because I know I know by the time I strip these and things they're probably all going to go out again but it's, it's nice to try to be a little bit consistent with that. 
So we'll put that aside again. For this sort of view here where you've got the actual XLRs going into stereo, so you're gonna use two XLRs, um, you're gonna basically cut off these phono connectors and these are quite short, so there's no point trying to save these phono connectors anyway. So we're just gonna cut them off as high as we can. We could probably actually go a bit higher. Um, let's just try, we'll try to go through the actual strain relief and see if we can slide that off. We kind of can't, it's gonna damage the wire. So yeah, just as high as you can on those. It. Um, I'll show you why it's critical to go as high as you can because if you imagine the whole length of this and they're gonna be side by side in the unit, you don't really have much to play with to get to the actual pins in this. It's, it's gonna be really tight. In fact, looking at this, I'm not even sure I can achieve it with using these these existing boots, but we'll work on that as we go along. Well, I'll just cut this one again. We don't really have too much choice, so let's just, we'll work out that problem when we come to it. We've got our diagram here, that's what we're trying to achieve. So I'm just going to strip this down and show you what is inside. So you've got your sort of furry screen there and then your two cores. And that's because this is a stereo wire in essence. So we can just wrap that up. And these two separate cores, we're gonna join them up anyway inside the unit. So if you take your XLR connector and you can see it comes with a number of pieces. You've got the actual sort of boot and then another sort of strain relief, which is not really gonna work out for us. And then just the actual solder tag. So just post that straight through. It's just about long enough that it's usable to work with. And if you want to, you can sort of, before you start feeding all of this through, you can actually tin the ends and it'll um, be a lot less likely to unravel as you're posting it through all of these things. So here's our connector. You might be able to see on your own one the numbers. So you've got pins one, three and two, so it's kind of the opposite. It's one, three and two, so it's it's sort of this way around, looking at it from the back end. So using our diagram below, we want to connect the shield minus, the shield and the black minus to the outer, which is this ground wire. So that is pins one and three. So what you're gonna do is basically solder it across those two. So start with pin one. And once pins one's actually sort of um, hardened, just bend it over. Might be a little hot, just be careful. Bend it over there so you can see it's just next to pin three or touching the pin three. And then just fill in that one. It's like a little pot of solder that once you've done. There we go. You can see that's not gonna go anywhere. And then all that remains is the actual signals which are coming in on pin two. solder in there. So you've got your signal on pin two and pin one and pin three are both joined together and going to the ground. All that remains is to get this back into the tube and it's got keyways on it. You'll see there's keyways in here so you can only put it in in a certain direction. You can just about see it there and you'll see that the same on the actual plastic of the tag unit and the plastic of the actual strain relief. So just, just keep rotating it gently and you'll see it'll only go in one way. And that's it. So if you take your unit like that, you can just plug your XLR straight in. And then plug your microphone wire into that. So. Jobs are good and
Now let's do the other one. It's going to be a lot trickier. Do 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 do. So many to do. So many to do. I'm going to start to do them now. So I done them now. We're making the connectors, making the connectors, making the connectors for my sound. Right, onwards with the next connector, and you can see I've actually already done one, and that's because I wasn't even sure it was going to be possible to do, but uh, it is. But I'm going to tell you right now, guys, you're going to have to bring your A game to this one because it's not particularly easy, but it's really quite neat when you're done. So strip the cables off, and you'll see inside, ah, oh, if you haven't just done the worst thing you could possibly do. Take more care than I did. You see here I've stripped off the insulation. You do not have too much cable here. You do not have spare cable to waste on this guy. So if you actually make this too short, like I've done now, you've got the potential of actually knackering this and ruining it. So I'm just gonna continue though on with the one good core. So you can see here, twist it all up, get the ends tinned right away. You're gonna need those tins. So get in there, tin them up, You've seen me do it a million times before. Put that one aside. Here's one I've tinned earlier, and I'll zoom in so you can see that. It's nicely tinned. Now, the reason is, once you assemble all of these components, you do not have room to mess around. So poke that through the hole of the boot. See, you've got, it's already slam dash at the end of the, that boot. So, you know, you put by the time you've put that strain relief in, it's starting to look really tight. So bend this over, bend it over 90 degrees hard so you've got, it won't move, so you've got somewhere to work against. So we know the pinouts from before, so my advice to you is actually fill the holes in the solder tags right away, just fill these little solder pots right up because you're not going to have enough fingers to do this later. So that's one, that's two, and in fact I'm going to really flood it, I want it very full, I don't want to have to manually apply solder to this once we start. Running away, he's running away, guys. You will succumb to my soldering. Right. It's exactly the same pin out as before. So you know the signal is going to be, ouch, be going to this pin two right here. You just see on the edge of the screen, pin two. That one, guys. So while I can just get to it, I'm just gonna ta ow. <laughs> He'd never learned. Because these XLR connectors are so fat, they actually can sink a lot of heat and they'll hold onto that for a long time. So I'm just going to solder on our signal straight onto pin two. And I'm gonna actually leave this a moment and let it actually cool down because I'm not an idiot. Well, I am an idiot, you know that, but I'd like to think I'm not an idiot two times in a row. If I can hold it there, it is, it is burning me. It really is hot. Take your time, let it cool down in between. So if I can get a bit of solder right in there, that will melt that onto just pin three. Oh, in my, in my eagerness to show you, I detached it before it had set. Right. Let's try one more time. There we go. I can see from this angle that it's taken. I'm just gonna blow on it, let it harden a bit before showing you this time. So that's it. So pin one and three are joined. Pin two is connected on its own onto the signal. And we just have enough room to actually assemble it all back into the connector itself. So poke that all through. Nice! That, as they say, guys, is that.
you've got your little mixer thing and you can see on the screen there's the two built-in uh, microphones are buzzing away let's turn those down and you've got channels one and two the top two channels which are the ones we're going to test one of our mono things into channel one and another one of our mono things into channel two so i'm just going to plug my microphone into channel one hello hello you can see channel one's flashing around like crazy now i'm going to put it into channel two Mm -mm. Hello, you can see channel two there is going up and down. That's great. That's just what we want. That's our mono, two mono sources working just fine. Um, so we're going to take our stereo one, which is that one. Be a little bit careful here. It looks a little bit fragile, especially the way if you see here, there's not too much to play with here. So I almost have to put them in at the same time. It would be nice. I should have left it a bit longer. Anywho, anywho, it is what it is. And uh, there, let's let's set the gains the same on channels one and two. And there we go. You can see all uh, tw both bars at the same time. Link, you save the day. You rescue the Princess Zelda. Yeah, perfect absolutely perfect so that's all i've got to do now just make up my other connectors and i am done so i hope that's have been some use to you i'll put the diagram back up the final diagram again you've got your two different types here your little y one for a stereo and your mono and it should just cost you hardly anything i say these are probably under a pound each and these cables were like a couple of quid so you know the whole lot would be under 10 pounds probably and you know if you consider how much it'll cost you to buy these you're going to make a great saving and the fact that you can have both sets so you've got all of the combinations you ever might want to use will be absolutely perfect and save you well into the future so yeah please feel free to click subscribe um, and comment down below I love your comments I live for your comments and I want to hear your opinions as ever thank you for watching